Hi, Hiram here. The last couple of days I've been doing a couple of boil tests on this fancy feast stove. This is one that I made. It's a variation of a Venom stove that I got. Called Venom because they made it. I got this on eBay. I forget who uh, makes these, but nice little stove. My only problem with it was that it didn't have much capacity for alcohol. So I made a variation of it using a cat food can, a tomato paste can that was cut down, and a carbon fiber wick in there between the two. This way it gives me a, a much larger capacity for alcohol. I mean you can put it up to about here. But uh, this was for melting snow and stuff in the winter. <clears throat> and one thing I had said with it was I punch a hole at the top here to let the vapors come out. Because in previous, in some of my other stoves that I played with, if you have something like this where it contains the alcohol in here, and then you block it off with the pot, the vapors tend to build up in here, push down, and then push alcohol up through the wick. So I just punched a hole there. Anyway, I got a comment from Trailhound. He said, I've made several stoves of this design using aluminum coddle middles, that's the coddle bottles, you know, the heavier beer bottles, without the vent hole, vent hole, boy, I can't talk today, without the vent hole in the inner portion, and never experienced the volcano effect you've described. Volcano because the vapor pushes the alcohol down and up through here. Anyway, Trailhound says, <clears throat> if it's not too much trouble, could you post a vid showing this phenomenon? Well, you ask for it, I try it, and I do these things so you don't have to. So what I did was I put together another stove. Um, again, I think this was an 8 ounce tomato sauce can. I cut it off so that it's about 1 inch from the wick to the bottom of the pot. There are holes in the bottom so that the alcohol can go in and get to the wick. But this time I didn't punch a vent hole. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a little video here, see if it does happen. With Murphy's Law it probably won't, but I'll still be punching holes. But anyway, let me set up my camera too. I'll get alcohol in here, get it to the wick, and I'll be right back for a test. I'm back. Okay, I've got this set up. Um, I don't know if you saw it before. I'm taking precautions. I have my fire extinguishers. I have this in a pan so that if it does flow out, which I'm hoping it does, if the alcohol comes out, it'll be contained in this, and then I can smother it with this. Hopefully, I don't want to go to the fire extinguishers. But uh, <clears throat> this isn't, you know, I'm intentionally trying to do something that you should not do. So let's go to camera two. Light this. Okay, I think you can see that. Camera two running, yep. Let me put on the water. And we'll see what happens. We're now about ten minutes into the test and nothing has happened. But I think part of my problem is uh, I used my old test pot and I've shown you in the past how bent up and stuff it is. I don't think this is making a good seal on the top of the stove. Matter of fact, if I look in there I can see a little bit of a gap in places. And now with it rocking, that makes it even better. So the I think the alcohol is getting out. What I'm going to do is stop this here. I'm going to put this out, let it cool off, put more alcohol in it. And I'm going to put another uh, pot on that I think might be a little bit tighter and see what happens. So, be right back. Okay, I've changed the pot. I changed it to the Stanley, which has a much flatter bottom. Uh, this has been on for about five minutes, if that. And I think you can see that the alcohol is flowing out over 
the uh, stove. So this is why it's the vapor pressure is pushing the alcohol down and back up through the carbon fiber. I'm pretty sure this wouldn't happen. Leastways, that's why I punch a hole up at the top to let the vapor come out where I want it to. So, yeah, that's a, you can see that that's a much better seal. So this is why I punch holes in the top of the, uh, the stove. Now again, like I said, don't do this. Uh, I do this stuff so you don't have to. If you're out in, you know, out in the woods and you're on, you have this down on something with a lot of, uh, debris and stuff, which I'm surprised at the way some people do the stoves out in the woods. They don't even bother sweeping away an area to get it down to the clean dirt. They just do it right on top of leaves and stuff. And if you did this with the alcohol coming out like this in leaves, man, you're going to make trouble. So I hope this helps Trail Hound. Uh, I'll also give a link to another video. Hang on, let me get my paper here. A, uh, if you get a chance, check out, can't think of the name, sorry, Cole Haven. Um, I'll put a link down below. He has a video where he made a stove similar to this, uh, putting a simmer ring on it, but instead of using the can like I did in mine, the tomato paste can, he made a pot stand out of hardware cloth. So, of course, with that, you don't have the problem, but it's an interesting stove. So again, I'll leave a link down below. I thank Trailhound for his comment about this. Um, I can, you can see here, I hope that this is the reason why I punch a hole in it. I thank uh, Cole Craven for sending me his video. Check it out. I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.